Hi, I'm Lauren, sales manager here at Radio World, and I wanna welcome you to this video where we're gonna be walking you through the Raymarine products as part of our virtual trade show video. So I have with me here today, Roy Shipley from Raymarine, and uh, Roy, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are. All right, thanks, Lauren. Uh, yeah, I'm Roy Shipley from uh, Raymarine Fleer Maritime, and I'm the uh, Canadian country manager for Canada. Sounds good, Roy. Um, so you guys have a pretty, uh, pretty robust line I would say going into 2021 there's there's not a lot of changes but there is one change with the new Axiom Plus right so why don't you tell us a little bit about Axiom Plus and maybe the differences between the Axiom units okay so uh, yeah the Axiom Plus is the updated version of the uh, the Axiom so we uh, increase the uh, screen brightness we increase the um, quality of the screen it's actually an IPS screen nice. a uh, an in-plane switching display so uh, very high bright, great contrast. And uh, so that's one of the uh, updates with the Axiom Plus, as well as um, we have a new coating on the screen that's actually designed to repel water. Oh, so nice. touch screens are occasionally affected by rain and, and spray and water. And uh, this coating actually allows water to run off the screen so that uh, the touch screen is so much more usable in the uh, in the wet conditions right that's a great feature i don't know of any other company that has any any coating on them like that so mm. that's a really nice feature with the rain marines yeah, yeah i believe that uh, we're the only ones who uh, who yeah. do that nice yeah. nice okay cool so we mentioned the axiom plus but you guys also have an element um, axiom plus axiom pro and axiom xl mm -hmm. right so there's a lot to choose from in your display when you're purchasing a rain marine um, can you run through some of the just basic differences and maybe um, just what the typical customer what type of boat they would have who would buy an element who would buy an axiom pro and that type of thing sure absolutely well the, you know the element is our uh, entry level uh, unit and uh, it's buttons only so no touch screen on an element and um, elements are available in seven nine and twelve inch displays they uh, there's also two variants of an element mm -hmm. there's an element s and an element hv the element s is great for cruising boats uh, runabouts uh, sailboats, that yeah. kind of thing, who don't want the more advanced fish finder features of the uh, Element HV. Right. So the Element HV has the uh, the 3D sonar, it has the side vision, the yeah. down vision, as well as the regular conical sonar, and the Element S only comes with that basic conical right. depth sounder sonar fish finder. Gotcha. So the Element S would be, if you're just looking for a, a, a inexpensive, but maybe a large screen chart plotter, that would be a good choice, but you can still get depth on it. Um, so it's sailboat kind of comes to mind for that um, and then the HVs would be good for uh, you know the smaller fishing boats mm -hmm. right yeah um, can we do uh, radar or autopilot with either of those units yeah so you can use our wireless quantum radar on yeah. the element you can't wire it you can you actually connect it wirelessly which is a great feature in a small boat because it can be really difficult to run sure. cabling on some of those small boats right. so just being able to mount the radar power it and have it wirelessly connected to the display is great right for and and uh, yeah, the elements will also drive an autopilot. So okay. if you uh, create uh, waypoints and routes in the uh, element, the actually the autopilot will steer to those right. routes and waypoints. Right. Nice. Okay. So th they're actually for entry level units quite feature packed. There's a lot you can definitely do mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. 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 And they do have uh, an enemy A2000 connection mm -hmm. so there's a, a bunch of interconnect right stability with a bunch of other products nice. as well okay so that's a, a good choice if you have a smaller boat sailboat or, or fishing boat um, now the the next step up is the axiom plus um, what sizes do those come in and then uh, what are some of the main differences like why would you move up to an axiom I okay guess? so the the axiom plus is available in seven nine and twelve inches as well mm -hmm. now it's a full touch screen so no buttons touch screen only uh, with that uh, uh, coating on the screen for the water, yeah. as well as the high bright displays. They're also incredibly fast with the quad core processor. They're also a full multifunction display. Right. Whereas the Element can do radar and, and control autopilots, the uh, Element, once you move into that level, your full multifunction display so we can do um, video, wired and wireless radar, um, so much so much more capability, right. as well as faster speeds. Sure. 
all of that stuff. Yeah, so I would definitely say of all the brands we sell, the Axiom is probably the fastest unit out there. Um, when you're navigating through the menu, there's like zero lag, even when you have units networked, um, autopilot's connected radar, when there's a heavy load on the unit, there's next to no lag. So. Now you also mentioned about other things you can add on to them. So cameras being one, we can do like engine room cameras, thermal cameras. Um, you can even control a drone with those if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah so d definitely all the video inputs, uh, you know, we, we do make a full line of thermal cameras uh, as well as things like backup cameras, right. engine room cameras. We make a, uh, a thermal engine room camera, which is a great item if you want to monitor your engine, if you're sure. worried about hot spots or wear on transportation transmission, that kind of thing, to be able to see the temperature changes. Right. So uh, th that's really interesting. And yeah, with the drone capability, uh, with the DJI drone, we can fully control the drone from the display. So you can actually fly the drone, watch the video on the display. You can send it to waypoints. It's uh, it's really quite yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. So from all those things that you can do with it, like the, the typical customer, I would assume, is probably going to be uh, maybe a larger sailboat who wants to have a little bit more of uh, networking devices, uh, maybe you know the wind sensors and all that displayed on there, or a larger power boat. You know, what would you say, maybe like 23 feet and up? Is, is that typical or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, really with a seven inch Axiom, you you can easily go down in, into even a runabout sure. really. But uh, nice that it runs the full gamut from the, the seven to the 12. Yeah. So it does, I would say you're probably about right. You know, that 23 yeah. foot up to, you know, 40 or even 50 right. feet. For yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. And then the next one up in the line is the Axiom Pro, and uh, that one has a lot of the features of the Axiom, but uh, I guess there's there's two main differences between those. Um, do you want to explain what those are? Sure. The, the Axiom Pro is very similar to an Axiom Plus, except not only does it have a touchscreen, but it also has complete button control as right. well. So great for anybody who uh, might prefer to use the buttons. You know, sometimes when you're bouncing around on the boat, touchscreen's not the best sure. way to use a unit. So sure. it's kind of nice to have those buttons. Also great for, for first responders and uh, right. commercial users. So sure. lots, of, uh, lots of options there. The software is the same between the Axiom Plus and the Axiom Pro yeah. using our Lighthouse software and one of the things we've done is we worked very very hard to make it really easy to use right it's extremely intuitive and um, it's you don't have to go into a lot of menus the the basic the things you use every day yeah. are extremely easy to access usually only a single press or a single button to get there right not having to go into menu and dig and dig sure. and dig to, yeah. to do some of those things yeah user friendly is always a nice thing you yeah, know? yeah. And, and with that unit having two ways to control at the touch screen and the buttons um, that makes it you know whoever you are whatever type of boat you're putting it on that's a really nice feature. Mm -hmm. um, now, the other the other difference with that that the fishermen, um, especially offshore fishermen, would like, or, or Great Lakes fishermen, is the one kilowatt sound report on it, right? Right. Yeah. There, there's two variants of the uh, Axiom Pro as well. There's an Axiom Pro S and an Axiom Pro RVX. And the S version again has that basic fish finder sonar conical sonar fish yeah. finder that everybody's used to. And then the RVX has the 3D sonar it has the side vision the down vision and the conical sonar and it also has a separate one kilowatt sonar port right and you pair that sonar with a one kilowatt transducer and those you know great lakes yeah. salmon fishermen uh, are, gonna, are gonna love that sonar for sure yeah definitely yeah the definition you would get with that is going to be like second to none because most units that you're going to use today even if you have uh, a high power uh, chirp transducer it's still only going to be 600 watts so these ones are into now one kilowatt which is is really nice um, now mentioning the the keypad on that unit um, if that's a you know they, they are priced quite a bit higher than the axiom plus um, if a customer wanted an axiom price point but really wanted that keypad what's the option for them there 
Yeah, we make a unit called an RMK10, which is essentially this keypad portion as a remote separate unit. Right. So one of the advantages, you, you can add it to any of the Axioms, Axiom Plus. Yeah. And the nice thing is you can put the displays up in the dash, for example, and have that keypad mounted closer sure. to where you actually use it. So you're not reaching over having to touch a screen all the right. time. So uh, it's a really nice option for those yeah. uh, touch screen only. For sure, yeah. yeah. We actually had a customer have, uh, he purchased, I think it was an Axiom 12 from us and, and that option, the RMK10, and he actually had it mounted into the armrest on his captain's chair. So it was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, That's we, probably the coolest. We designed it. We designed it that so. shape and size for oh, that yeah? exact okay, reason. Nice, yeah. nice. And then they also come either a portrait or landscape uh, with the, the keypad. So no matter how you want to orient it, if you wanted to put it beside the unit or horizontally, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So with the Axiom Pro, um, based on all those features, um, I guess uh, like a center console type boat would be one that, uh, you know, fishermen would probably put that on and then like you have mentioned, the first responders uh, or just the people with the boats that would typically put the uh, Axiom Pluses on, but uh, maybe want that that keypad control, right? Yeah, absolutely. With the Axiom Pro, uh, really, the sizes are nine inch, 12 inches and 16 inches right. for the Axiom Pro. And uh, it, it's really for any boat, anyone who wants the touch screen and the buttons. Sure. And uh, the nice thing is you can actually lock the touch screen out oh. and have it as a button only unit. Right. So again, any, anyone, really anybody who would prefer to maybe use the buttons, who gets into a little bit rough yep. water might might want the buttons. Yep. And of course the, uh, the government commercial sure. users as well, it's very important to yep. them as well. Definitely. Yeah, a lot of the uh, commercial uh, contracts we see definitely include the, the Axiom Pro on it just for those reasons. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the one above that, we won't spend too, too much time on it because, uh, you know, it's really the, the mega yacht unit I, is what I would call it. But uh, the Axiom XL, uh, tell us a little bit about those right. systems. The Axiom XL is the top of the line for us. And um, they're large screens. They're available at 16, 19, 22 and 24 inches. Wow. And uh, they, they're all touch screen and they utilize that RMK uh, 10 keypad right. that we talked about. And they do have some advanced features, a lot of inputs and outputs, uh, the ability to uh, uh, work with PCs. Uh, you, you can actually use those displays as the touch screen for a computer. So right. if you do want to interface a computer on the boat with your navigation system, it's a really nice way to melt the two of them together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they are super, super bright and uh, just incredible displays. Sure, sure. So that would kind of be the, the customer looking at that would be like the 50 foot plus yacht, most, I would say, Most right? likely, okay. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, okay. Um, so that's the, the lowdown on the Raymarine MFDs, you know, and how to select which one. Um, a couple things we touched on are autopilot and radar. So let's talk about that a little bit, Roy. Um, sure. We get people coming in, I know, to, to our booth at the, the, the shows, and I know you as well, uh, wanting to put autopilot on their boat. Um, and uh, can you just explain a little bit of, of what the information we need uh, from the customers about their boat to help them select the right autopilot? Absolutely. For uh, To select an autopilot properly on a power boat, it's all about the type of, for, the first thing is the type of steering. Right. So. If it's hydraulic steering, which majority of yep. boats are these days, if it's hydraulic steering, it's all about the volume of the steering ram. Sure. We need to spec a pump for the autopilot that's going to move enough uh, steering fluid to move that ram at a certain speed. Right. And so therefore knowing the volume of the steering ram or at least the model number of that steering ram yeah. is how we're going to spec a pilot because it's going to tell us which one of the autopilot pumps to use, yeah. and then in turn that'll tell us what electronics to use for the system. Right. So on a power boat, it's all about the volume of the steering ram or the model number, so we can we can sure. cross reference that or look it up. And that's important, I guess, two ways, right? Because we don't want to underpower, but we also don't want to overpower, right? Yeah, it's it's all about what's called hard over to hard over yeah. time. And that's how quickly the, the autopilot would steer the boat from hard over to hard over. Sure. And the software in the autopilot is written for a particular band of speed. Right. And we go outside of that, the autopilot's gonna be erratic, either sure. steer too much or not steer enough. Right. So uh, yeah, that's, that that's why it's important to be in that correct yep. 
that spec. range. Yep, yeah, for sure. Okay, so and and as Roy mentioned, uh, most people when they're coming to us with a, a request for an autopilot, they can't tell us what the the cubic inch capacity on their steering cylinder is, and that's okay. Um, like Roy mentioned, just the model number is enough because then we can go to, and the manufacturer as well, we can then go to the manufacturer's website like Seastar and look up those specs and then spec a, a pump. Um, so that, that's the first step. The second step then, I guess, is selecting the computer um, system, but that's all dictated by the pump, right? It is, yeah. For example, if it's a type one pump, you're going to use an EV200 autopilot. Right. If it's a type two or a type three pump, different sizes, then you're gonna use the EV400 sure. autopilot. Okay, perfect. And then on a power boat with cable steer, um, is that same idea or what do we do in there? Cable steering is a little bit more difficult today. Um, we don't make a drive for a cable steered sailboat, right. so the electronics will work fine, but there are some aftermarket products like Octopus make some very good um, drive units for cable steered boats yep. and we can interface to those drive units very very easily right and they octopus even offer a, a unit with a built-in rudder feedback mm. so that tells the autopilot where the drive is all the time and that's built right into their drive so we you not only do you are you going to get the autopilot but on the display you're actually going to get rudder angle indication right. for that outboard okay. so it's kind of nice yeah that's nice um so with uh, let's talk about the rudder feedback for a second on Typically, we use virtual rudder feedback um, where it's the software that's telling the autopilot where the, the rudder is when you commission it. Um, there are sensors, though, for that. What, would you recommend those sensors on a boat that has outboards, on a boat that has inboard outboard, and then a boat that has stern drive? Okay, so our autopilot's quite capable of running, as you say, virtually without the uh, rudder feedback. They will operate, I think, better with the feedback, yeah. but there's lots of boats that it's impossible to sure. install a rudder feedback. If you have nothing inside the boat that turns when the drive turns, yeah. then there's really no way to install the rudder feedback. Sure. So outboards and stern drives, it's highly unlikely you're ever going to uh, install the rudder yep. feedback. Inboards, you know, rudders, that definitely you want to install the, uh, right. the feedback. And with most autopilots, it's included in the package. Okay, perfect. So talked about power boats. Now let's get into to sailboats. Um, it's I think a little bit different, but kind of the, the same theories. Um, what do we need to know from a customer who has a sailboat to select an autopilot for them? Sailboat is relatively easy. All we really care about is the displacement of the boat. Okay. The displacement of the boat will tell us what size linear drive to use right and then that tells us what electronics to use and so forth so it's all about the displacement of the boat okay we as long as it's we uh, with the assumption that it's cable steered which sure you know majority of sailboats yep. are so as long as it's cable steered and uh, we get the displacement we can spec the correct linear drive and then that just leads us to the to right. the rest gotcha okay so that's that's fairly simple um i guess one other question that i know i get a lot is i've already got a pump or a drive on my boat but i want to get a new autopilot to take advantage of you know the ev1 sensor for mm -hmm. example um is, is that something you guys can do yeah absolutely i mean it uh, an autopilot pump really is an autopilot pump so even if it's an, another brand we could easily install new electronics and use that existing pump or existing linear drive on a sailboat, right. for example. It is would be nice to know the uh, current draw sure. of the existing pump or drive. So it, again, we know what size autopilot to spec right. because the control box for the autopilot is limited in how much current it can output. So knowing that uh, current draw helps us spec the electronics, but gotcha. no problem at all to use an existing pump or an existing linear drive. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, so one thing uh, I can tell you is Raymarine Autopilots are, in my opinion, probably our most popular that we, we would sell. I would have to check the numbers to be perfectly accurate on that, but I'm pretty sure they are. Um, why is that, Roy? Like, what separates your autopilot from everyone else? Well, I, I think it's two things. The, the, the software, the, the algorithms that we've written yeah. for the autopilot are, are pretty amazing. Yeah. But that sensor that you pointed to there, that EV1 sensor, uh, makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. It's a, a nine axis sensor that has accelerometers in it, um, digital gyros, as well as the flux gate compass that's always been at the heart of right. autopilots for quite a few years. So this nine axis sensor, 
actually senses everything that's happening with the boat, the pitch, roll, yaw, mm -hmm. heave, everything that's happening, and it's using that to make decisions on how to steer the boat. Right. And it's doing that multiple times a second so that it always knows what's happening and it's using all that to determine the best way to steer the boat. Right. So that sensor makes a huge difference, especially in heavy weather or following seas, which are always sure. very traditionally difficult to steer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the nice thing too is, um, you know, the price point of them, they actually come in cheaper than a lot of the other ones we sell. So you get a really good value and a really good autopilot with the, the Ray Marine ones. So I want to ask Roy a little bit about the radars now, and there's there's really two typical types. There's the dome and then the open array. So the dome is just the, the round dome that you'll see on top of the boats. The open array is the, the beams that, you know, three, four feet that uh, actually spin. And uh, what would be, I guess, the two different applications for those two? Uh, really, it's probably uh, the size of the boat, what fits on the boat, what looks you know, best, yep. but it also has a little bit to do with output power and a thing called horizontal beam width. Right. And the bigger the arm of a radar, the smaller the horizontal beam width gets, and the smaller the horizontal beam width, the better the radar. Right. But so in the domes, we make an 18 inch diameter dome and a 24 inch diameter dome in yep. a magnetron radar, yep. and then an 18 inch solid state radar. Okay. So the difference between those two is that traditionally radars have always been magnetron mm -hmm. for many, many, many years. And a magnetron radar is high power, so it has a lot of power to punch through rain and fog and, yep. and go distance, but they have a, a very long range for the minimum detection range. Right. So they don't see things extremely close. They see sure. things far away actually better than they do very, very close to the boat. Yeah. They also use more power because they're outputting more power. We make an 18 inch and a 24 inch uh, diameter magnetron radar. And we also make solid state 18 inch radome as well. Yeah. So solid state is a little bit newer technology and it's maybe the direction that, that radar is going, but it has far less output power. Right. So it, it, it's opposite of a magnetron. It doesn't see quite as far, mm -hmm. but it sees things closer up extremely well. Right. And very good target definition, and it uses a lot less power. So really great for uh, sailboats, for example, yeah. is the amount of current draw from a solid state radar. Sure. So Roy, what are some uh, downsides to this new solid state radar? Well, the solid state, it just doesn't have the output power. So okay. it just doesn't see as far. Right. Um, you know, the benefits, the lower power and all that are great, but it just doesn't have the output power of, uh, of a magnetron gotcha. radar. Okay. And that's why with our open array radar, so those radars that have the arms that spin, uh, we only make right now a magnetron radar. Gotcha. So high output power, we figure that those are gonna go on a little bit larger boats yeah. and they want that output power. They sure. wanna be able to see those further distances. They wanna be able to track weather at further distances. Yeah. So the advantage of magnetron is more power to see further and maybe track weather better. Right. The advantage of solid state is lower power draw and the ability to see very close in targets very, okay. very well. Okay, so basically if a, if a customer is looking for something to put on their boat, you know, running uh, Georgian Bay at night um, to avoid collisions or, you know, on the Great Lakes when uh, fog or uh, rain might come in, um, the solid state is going to do the job for them. Absolutely, right? yeah. Okay. Either one of them is a great, uh, a great tool. There's really nothing better uh, for collision avoidance when you can't see. Yeah, for and, sure. And either the magnetron or the solid state are going to work great in those applications. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the specific products now. Let's start with the Quantum. Um, I know there's there's two versions of it. There's a wireless and a wired. So what customer should be looking at the wireless and, and who should look at the wired? Sure. So the, the Quantum is our solid state 18 inch radome. Yeah. And we do make a wireless version of it. All of our displays have Wi-Fi built into them. And the radar, the wireless radar has Wi-Fi in it as well. So Wi-Fi is great on you know, a sailboat, for example. Mm -hmm. You don't want to run that larger cable up the mast. All you need to do is power it. A lot sure. of times you can take that power from a steaming light or right. you know, something like that and put that radar up on the mast and Wi-Fi it back to the display. Right. Uh, also works great. It was really designed originally 
for kind of center consoles or smaller fishing boats, yeah. especially if you have uh, a top where you've got those aluminum posts that yep. come up that hold the uh, the hard top up, yep. it's extremely difficult yeah. to run cable in some of those. For so sure. So being able to drop the uh, radar on, take power from again, the anchor light or the steaming yep. light, and uh, Wi-Fi that to the, to the display, right. it makes it so much simpler to uh, okay. install. So the wireless is really designed uh, for, for cases where you couldn't wire something or it'd be very difficult to wire. But would you recommend if you can wire to, to do that? <laughs> I I would yeah. I would I mean I, I would too I so. like it it is a it is a piece of safety equipment yeah. after all sure and I like the wired version I, I just think that I mean I, I use Wi-Fi at home and yeah. on your phone and I mean Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi yeah. right so um, there's always the possibility that there may be an issue sure so I would prefer it to be wired but if it's extremely difficult or can't be done. Yeah. That it's a great option, you have the, the wireless option. version. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and one thing too, um, just because it's a question we get a lot about Wi-Fi, um, and I'll just explain that Wi-Fi is not internet. And a lot of people have that uh, right. thinking that when they're out in the middle of the lake, how am I gonna get Wi-Fi because there's no internet? Wi-Fi is just a means of um, how the internet transmits its data wirelessly but it's not the internet. So we can create a Wi-Fi hotspot with this that can pair up to the Ray Dome and then they communicate through Wi-Fi. So it's just a means of, of, um, of communication really. Uh, next one up you have is the Quantum 2 and that's got a feature called Doppler. Um, right. So what's that all about? So with a solid state radar, we can actually use this Doppler feature and it, it'll allow us to change the color of the radar echoes to make them all gray and paint targets that are moving towards us as red okay. and targets that are moving away from us green. Right. So it's a very easy way to have a look at a radar screen and see what's dangerous very sure. quickly. So Doppler is a great feature for people who don't use radar every yeah. day, that it's not quite as interpretive. You can sort of look at it and get a much quicker view of what's dangerous because these targets that are moving towards you are red. Yeah, exactly. So, and everything else is this kind of muted gray. Sure, sure. So uh, the Doppler feature is a great, uh, yeah. great feature for people who don't use radar every day. Right. And it uses the the, the Doppler principle, obviously, uh, frequencies change as the beam gets sure. you know, bounced back from yep. targets that are moving towards you versus targets sure. that are moving away from you. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And is there a wireless version of that one? Uh, there is. There is? Okay. Yeah. So I, I would say too, uh, our most popular Raymarine radar right now is the Quantum 2 with Doppler. Uh, most of our customers do like that feature. So uh, that's definitely one to take a look at. And then um, the open array, I guess, is is the uh, the next big one that you guys would have, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so maybe just briefly touch on those as well. Sure. We make a uh, 4 kilowatt and a 12 kilowatt kilowatt and a four foot and a six foot open array. So four foot arm that spins and a six foot arm. Yeah. And we make them in four kilowatts and 12 kilowatts. Okay. And um, they're both phenomenal radars. Um, you know, obviously for a little bit bigger boat because you can't put sure. you know, a big open array yeah. on a small boat, <laughs> but um, great radars with lots of power to punch through rain and fog. Um, great for, uh, for any offshore fishermen yeah. who are looking for birds. Uh, they actually have a particular bird mode in them. Right. We uh, wrote some software specifically to find birds. Yeah. Because a lot of offshore yeah. fishermen are looking for birds for the bait fish. For and, sure. Yeah. And going that route. So uh, yeah, very nice radars for those larger boats. Yeah, definitely. And and so you kind of see the two benefits to the open array and then the the solid state radars. And you guys have actually even had customers who've put both on. Right. You've had the open array, uh, especially you really see this on a lot of the uh, saltwater boats where they can look for birds. And then for the collision avoidance mm -hmm. at the close range, they have a, a smaller quantum. Absolutely. Rate, so. Yeah. Solid state and a magnetron radar is a yeah. fantastic way to go. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, there's a pretty good rundown on the radars and autopilots for you with Raymarine. Um, I want to maybe get uh, looking at some units and, and show you some of these features and what they look like on the screens. So Roy, we've talked about the Lighthouse 3 software and how easy it is to use, how fast the units are. Do um, you want to demo uh, just the, uh, the units, how they operate, how the software works, the layout, the menus, all of that type of stuff so people can see what we're talking about? Sure. Here's an example of a typical screen. You know, you've got your chart and your different fish finders available. If you want to view the chart, it's as easy as touching the chart icon and you see how quickly that chart loads. So there's the Navionics chart and we've got pinch to zoom. 
with the chart and absolutely no lag time, extremely fast. We can also use the zoom in and zoom out buttons here for it. When we wanna go back to that home screen, there's a button for home, instantly takes us back. We wanna take a look at, say, the three-dimensional fish finder. Again, we have that pinch to zoom feature. We can also manipulate the screen. There's a lot of video happening here. There's a lot of processing happening and it's incredibly fast. What we're doing here in this three-dimensional fish finder is essentially mapping the bottom. So this is one really cool feature that a lot of uh, our salmon fishermen have been using to see, you know, what's behind them and uh, where the bait balls are in relation to them. And right now, Roy, it's actually drawing like a, a map of the bottom um, rather than just a straight line behind the boat. So you can actually get like a really nice three-dimensional view to everything, right? Yeah, absolutely. One of the, I mean, th these are fish here these different colored uh, balls that you see. And it can be run in two different uh, scenarios. One is the way you see it here. The other one is where you're just seeing behind the boat and it gives you a very good position of where those bait balls are relative to the boat if they're a few hundred feet off to the starboard side or the port side sure. and at what depth they're at. Or you can run it this way and actually map the bottom. This is very good if you're looking for uh, drop-offs and rock piles and holes, that kind of thing on the bottom. Yeah, for sure. And then you have some uh, quick keys over on the side there as well, looks like for different views. Yep, we can look at the straight down view, off to the side or straight behind the boat. Nice. And then if we want to look at that other view, We change it to the scrolling image here. So this is just giving us now, rather than mapping and stitching everything together, this is just giving us like a, a path we've traveled. Correct. Right so behind, right? The boat is right here, and this is looking off to the side as well as straight below the boat. We have fish here. So we have fish directly below the boat. The nice thing is if you were to see you know, these, these colored balls, these fish out here, see you could be 100 feet off to the uh, starboard side, you know that that's where those bait balls are. So not as only is it giving you the depth, but it's also giving you a position of where those fish are relative to you. Right. Now let's say we wanted to change to the traditional sonar. Um, we don't even have to leave this screen, do we? We don't have to. I mean, we can make dedicated screens, but if you want to go into the menu, you can actually choose from down vision, side vision, or the regular sonar. So if you want to go to the regular sonar, you can. You can move through all the four different sonar modes in the single screen, or you can actually program certain screens for certain fish finders. So here's a multiple fish finder combo with side vision, down vision, and the conical sonar all on the screen at the same time. We can actually have all four sonars firing at the same time on one screen if we would like. Wow, that's really impressive. So that just speaks also to the processing power in the units. Like you say, there's a lot of video that that has to, uh, to process and uh, to be able to do them all for it at the same time and to update without any jittering or anything, that's really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Roy, we talk about how easy these are to use. Do you wanna just go through the menus in the unit and just show people um, like how they lay out and how you would uh, find different things in them? Yeah, okay, well, I think what we'll do is let's take a look at the chart. Sure. And, you know, uh, with the Lighthouse 3 software, not having to go into the menus is really the most important thing. Generally, all you need to do is touch the screen and hold it for a second, and it will come up with the five or six things that, you know, you always do on that screen. Yeah. On a chart, you're gen generally going to want to go to, which is just making a, a temporary waypoint. Yeah. You're going to place a permanent waypoint or you want to build a route. And there are a couple of other options as well. We've got, um, you know, the measure measuring tool. We also have the auto route feature is available with the Navionics chart. Yeah. So uh, really all it takes is a single button press on all of the screens to give you the majority of what you need to do. Sure. If you do want to go into the menu, if you're looking for something a little more advanced, you can go into the menus. Again, we have those five or six things that you always use here. And then you just scroll to the bottom and go to the little gears. And now we come across the actual more in-depth menus. One of the advantages of Lighthouse 3 software is 
that we have not only the menu here, but we still got the screen that right. we're in showing because a lot of times when you go into menus, you make changes and then have to exit to, and then you look at it and say, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Right. And you need to come back in again. So we have the screen live. So here, this is layer. So this is that added information that's put on top of the chart. And AIS is turned on right now. And as you see all these green AIS targets, if I turn that off, they immediately go off on the screen. Right. So I see it happen live so that you're not going in and out of menus thinking that you're making the changes you want and, sure. and not having the right changes. So it's a really, really nice feature and it's one of the things that we work really hard to do. So the Lighthouse 3 software, it's really just gonna save you a lot of time, you know, rather than having to go out, see if that feature is something you actually wanted to do. Then you have to go back in and hopefully you can find it again. Now you just get the live preview. You don't have to worry about anything like that. So that's that's a really nice feature to see your changes as you're making them. Yeah, it makes it very, very easy to use. It's also very intuitive. You don't need to pull out the big thick manual, you know, 99% of the things you're gonna wanna do actually can be accomplished just by touching and holding the screen for a second. This isn't gonna be the most exciting part of the video, but it is something important to know. We've got three Axiom Plus 12 inch units here here, but uh, they are all different. So Roy, can you just explain the uh, differences between them based on the part numbers there? Sure, the top one you're looking at right now is a uh, an Axiom 12 Plus and it does not have any sonar built into it. So can we, we can't even plug a transducer you in? You cannot, it has okay. no built-in sonar. It's got built-in GPS and it's a multifunction display. So you can still add those items to it. You can always add one of our black box sonar depth sounders to it, but it does not have the ability to have a transducer plugged directly into it. Okay, so that one GPS only, and then we come down here, and what is this one? So the next one, the one we're looking at now is an RV version of an Axiom Plus. So that stands for real vision, which means it has the sonar built into it. It has the sonar that will do 3D, down vision, side vision, and the conical sonar built in, but there is no transducer included in that unit. Okay, and so, then, yeah, so we, we would buy this one in the event we needed like some through-haul transducers? Absolutely, right? if you, this gives you that flexibility to buy the display and then buy the type of transducer or transducers that are required for the boat. Sure, and then we have finally this one down here, which does come with a transducer. It does, so it's also an RV unit, so it has the built-in sonar with the 3D side vision, down vision, and conical sonar, and that includes a transom mount transducer. Okay, perfect. And one thing that they do all share in common, and actually every uh, Raymarine unit we sell at Radio World, they all come with the Navionics Plus North American chart. I want to ask you, Roy, um, you know, about the service and the warranty with Raymarine products. Um, so first of all, what type of warranty do we have on the, the units? Okay, so our standard warranty is two years, but all you need to do is register that warranty on our website which we would really suggest you do, yeah. and you get an additional year. Oh wow. So you basically get a three year warranty right. with, with majority of our units. Yeah, well that's excellent. That's definitely uh, best in the industry uh, for have a three year uh, full coverage on your, uh, on your unit. So that's the, the warranty, Roy, um, you know, great three year coverage. What about service? Like if a customer does have a problem, um, what's the first step they should take? Okay, so if there is an issue, the first thing would be to contact the dealer you buy it from, yep. contact Lauren, and um, we, you know, we would like you to uh, at least have a discussion with our tech support people eventually mm -hmm. as well. Um, we do have a one eight hundred hundred number that you can call and uh, speak to one of our tech support people. We yep. also have a local tech support guy, so uh, Lauren can put you in touch with him yep. as well. And uh, ultimately, if there is a problem and the product is defective and needs to be replaced, we have an advanced warranty replacement policy. Right. So what we'll be able to do is we'll actually be able to send the dealer, send Lauren a replacement unit, and you can basically take the defective unit off the boat, bring it to Lauren, give it to him, he'll give you a brand new unit. Yeah. And uh, that's essentially how we deal with uh, with issues under warranty. Right, yeah, and and I would say that's, that's perfect. You know, usually if you guys call us right away, if you have an issue, 
I would say probably nine times out of 10, it is a software related issue. So we can usually try and walk you through a few things to test some stuff. Um, if it's not something we can handle, we definitely get you in touch with Raymarine's local support and uh, they can, can solve it for you. And if it does need to be replaced, I can tell you these guys are extremely quick um, with that advanced warranty replacement. All right, Roy, so um, I wanna ask you, what is your favorite feature on the Raymarine products? Uh, it's a tough one. There are, you know, there's so many, sure. but uh, I, I think the augmented reality really separates us and sets us apart from the others. Yeah. The the ability to put a forward-looking visible light camera on the uh, on the boat and actually see the camera live on the screen and overlay information from the Navionics chart. Right. Things like waypoints and uh, navigation marks and buoys and all that kind of thing, as well as AIS targets wow. overlaid over top of that live video image, I think is uh, is really an incredible feature. Yeah, for sure. That sounds pretty cool. And if you're confused and you don't really understand that, let's get Roy to show us that because I think that's something we need to see. All right, sounds good. All right, Lauren, I'm gonna show the uh, augmented reality on the uh, Axiom Pro display. Here we have the standard uh, multifunction display. We're gonna go to the video application by touching the screen. And what we're looking at is a video uh, from the camera looking forward on the boat. And you can see these targets here overlaid over top of that video. We've got the green buoy at 0.57 nautical miles away from us. And this information is coming from the Navionics chart. We also have Actually, hidden behind that red buoy there is a uh, an AIS target as well. So we can overlay AIS targets and navigation data from the Navionics chart as well as waypoint information. So it's an incredible way to get really good situational awareness and especially when you can't see if you think even if this camera if it was say at night or in the fog where the camera can't see very far we can still see those overlaid targets and know exactly where they are relative to the boat one of the advantages here is often when you're following through uh, a, a channel you're at one buoy and you know the next buoy is is you know, down the way, but you don't quite know where it is. This way you can see, okay, that next red buoy is just there off the uh, starboard side. So it's an incredible tool for situational awareness. Yeah, definitely. And so what does a customer need to buy when they want to get a setup like this? So all they, they need, probably the best way to do it would be to buy a kit that we sell that includes the forward looking camera and a small module and what the module does is it, it actually stabilizes the camera because if when you install the camera on the boat if you're in a bit of heavy yeah. seas the the image would be moving up and down like this so that module stabilizes the video image it also positions it correctly and allows the information to be overlaid correctly right so it's called an ar200 module and probably one of our cam 210 or 220 cameras for uh, the forward looking. Okay, and so this literally is just a live view from a camera as if you're looking out the windshield on your boat with all this information overlaid on it. Right? Exactly. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. That is really cool. So thanks for joining us today with this video and learning about the Raymarine products. Roy, I wanna thank you for joining us uh, in this video and in this virtual show to, uh, to teach us about all the Raymarine products. So thanks for being here and thanks to all you guys for watching.